this tiebreaker here as we get things underway. Yeah, that one uh, uh, snakeskin veil was really awesome up against Noriyuki Mori. Just having something you have to play around and respect. It, just that one card in an open deckless tournament shouldn't make that much of a difference, but it really <laughs> does. Oh, for sure. Just wondering, do they have it? There's one green open. Should I be worried? But a pretty exactly. good start here for Arnaz. He's able to go turn one Edgewell Innkeeper into turn two Rimrock Knight. Getting that Magda Brazen Borrow off the top of the library. So a very good start indeed. Yeah, you can't really complain about that when you're on the play and you have Edgewell Innkeeper into Rimrock Knight. You know that game one, you are going to get that advantage right there. You're going to get so. that card draw, yeah. Oh, yes. Excellent card indeed. Would love to find some more adventure creatures to capitalize on it, but can't really complain with a Magda and an Ember Cleave in hand. As, yeah, uh, Magda's going to make her way down. Yeah, a little flooded here, but with Rimrock Knight turning sideways and Magda turning sideways next turn, like the amount of treasures that you are going to get here is going to be quite large. And speak of the one of there, we got the Snakeskin Veil. <laughs> Not going to come into play quite yet, but something to keep an eye on. You know, next turn is going to be quite nice here for Arna as he is setting himself up for an Embercleave turn. Is flooding slightly though, as a forest is drawn off the top of the library. But Embercleave is online if he chooses to go for it. How tempting is it to do it this turn? I, I think you have to. I mean, otherwise you're just doing nothing from Arnie Hushenbeth's side. So I would imagine we see a Rimrock Knight attack. And that's really all you have to do with you with getting that treasure. You don't even have to make this super obvious. I mean, it's obvious in the sense that it's a 4-1 into a 5-5. Five five, but that could mean Stomp. You know, that could, that could mm -hmm. mean other things. But Embercleave being the big one here. Yeah, Embercleave is certainly the best option out of the ones listed, as you don't lose your creature in uh, whatever happens here. And you get a big old chunk of damage to face. Down to 11 goes Gavin Thompson. Down to the bugbear is the draw. Yeah, and we see Gavin drawing the better creatures here in the form of Lovestruck Beast, one of the most important thing in these Gruel matchups. But being on the play and being able to equip that Embercleave first really looks like this is still advantage Arne Hushenbeth. Yeah, I'm curious if we'll see the Heart's Desire played out or if we're just going to go for the Lovestruck Beast and hold up that Snakeskin Veil to uh, potentially get rid of this uh, Rimrock Knight. Yeah, definitely some options here. I like getting aggressive because this game seems like you're going to lose on the draw to that Embercleave. There's really no way to shut down Embercleave full stop. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to game one, games two, we have some wilt, we have some stuff like that to deal with. But at this point, you just have to punch, you know, in the direction Oy. of each other and just hope to go over the top. Man, these draws have not been nice for either player, honestly. Just so much land. Yeah, and now the math goes from, well, I can't realistically win the game this turn. How much can I pressure versus how much do I have to leave back not to die? And yeah. that, is a, that is a tough math problem here for, for Hushenbeth. <laughs> and from what I've heard about the Gruul, they don't typically like math. Yeah, math is for the blockers. So, yeah. yeah, you know, hit first, ask questions later. But with so much on the line here, Arne is going to have to take a bit of a pause and just make sure whatever he does here is not going to leave him dead on the crackback. But one thing's for sure, Rimrock Knights can't block, so just send it in. Yeah, that one's getting in there for sure. It's just, do we want to throw the layer in there? Probably not, since it's only going to be a 3-3. A Magda, probably not. Uh, it's looking like really the only good attack here is Rimrock. Mm -hmm. And realistically, Gavin has to block this in case of a stomp or a, another Rimrock Knight Boulder Rush. So he's going to have a have a think on this one. If he doesn't yeah. block here, then he is just an all-seeing eye. And that's the really good point here, because if you just block with a 1-1 one, one, that soaks up one, you take two, or you take you go down to two, and then Stomp kills you or Rimrock Knight. But if you don't block here, there's a world where the crackback is enough damage. Ooh, I think I like it. I like it. it. 
Oh, he's risking it for the biscuit, and I think it's going to pay off here for him. I think it's going to pay off as well. We're looking at a situation where we can Embercleave plus Snakeskin Veil on a creature, so that would be put on a Lovestruck Beast. That's 14 trample damage right there. As it stands, it looks like we have six toughness on Hushimbeth's side. So one of those creatures can go in front of each Lovestruck Beast, and then you can block another 1-1. One, one. You take one... And then 13, so 14 damage. So I, <laughs> from what I'm counting, I'm counting 14 with my quick math here. So maybe we can animate a layer. I, I don't know. I'm counting one short. So there is a snakeskin veil that adds to the, the love struck beast. So one of yep. those is 14 by itself. I was counting that. So 13 yeah. would trample over. And then it looks like one of the one ones goes unblocked um, because the layer can get in front of one. Yeah. So the layer can go on a one, one Magda goes on the five, five edge while innkeeper on the five, five. And uh, yeah, I think that's one short. How frustrating. Goodness me. I mean, he has to go for it here. He's just super dead. Has to. Otherwise. Has to hope there's a, uh, you know, um, a blocking mistake maybe, or. Yeah, I think we need that land in there. Not blocking with the land would be said blocking mistake. Okay, there's the lair. Here's a 3-3 three, three up. It's a jump in the way of one of these attackers. Oh. oh, uh oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay all right. All right. Everyone, everyone, breathe. It's all right. Walk. Oh man. Yeah. You can see Gavin knows. He's just like, oh gosh, darn it. Why are you so smart, Arna? Wow. One short. What a game here already. Snakeskin veil. Gonna make it a little chunkier. Look at his face! <laughs> oh my! You are so close to dead, Arna. What the heck? Oh, Look at Gavin. He can't believe line. it. He can't believe it. Oh no! Wow! Oh my goodness me! That is as close as you're gonna get it. Look at the look at both players. They can't believe what just happened there. I don't think we can either. Yeah, that was insane. But not even the James Franco behind Gavin Thompson could have helped him out of this situation. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the good luck charm so far with Gavin just dominating in standard uh, as far as this entire tournament goes. Oh my goodness me. All right, so first game goes to Arna Hushenbet in a very, very close matchup there. But it's not over yet. Just a reminder that this is a best of three matches, not games. Even if Arna is able to win this next game, still has to win a whole other game of Magic. So uh, yeah, let's uh, jump back in and see what the sideboarding decisions were. Anything that stands out for you here, Corey? Um, no real standouts for me. Looks like we have those uh, mixed out. We got the wilts coming in. That's very important for these ember cleaves. Ox is something that I've been seeing from a lot of players coming in. Just this card that's really designed to beat rogues, but it just turns out when these type of decks are just going one for one at each other and trading resources left and right, Ox coming back can just be detrimental. So I really love them bringing in Ox here. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump into the action here. Take a look at the opening hands and uh, see if the players have recovered from the ending of that first game. That was absolutely nutty. Magic Missile, that's a sweet little inclusion in the deck. Yeah, spreading out the damage there, impressive. Mm -hmm. Angel Innkeeper coming on down. It's going to meet its uh, untimely end in a good old well-timed stump. Always arrives when you need it, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And there we got some painful lands in the form of the Shatter Skull Smashings, but oh, lands yeah. nonetheless. Getting that Ranger class out. This is one card that I really think is going to have a, a heavy impact 
on this matchup is is just being able to level it early and get these creatures going. Now, Gavin does have a few extra copies over that, so I, I was very curious to see if that was going to have an impact here. Yeah, range of class early is just phenomenal. Once you get it down, if you're able to keep something on the battlefield and benefit from those counters, it can run away with the game. Pretty similarly to how Luminarch Aspirant just lets Mono White go crazy. Mm -hmm. Except this time, uh, the enchantment's a little more difficult to deal with. It really is. And then once you get to that final level on Ranger class, you can really just take over the game. Yeah. All right. The land of the top here for Arna has a lot to work with. Has got Shadow Skull Smashing, Eska's Chariot, two Akroan Wars as well as a Magda Brazen Borrower. Also has the lands to uh, keep the threats coming. So it'll be interesting to see what he goes for here. Yeah, I think I'd lean on Azika's Chariot, the Cadillac here to start. It really put yourself in a proactive situation where you don't have a good answer to the Zika's Chariot from Gavin. So I, I think you're kind of forced into that, but maybe a Crow and War now to just get that going. Take one of these Bone Crusher Giants and force that really, really powerful Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 uh, to start dealing with creatures there might be a little bit better. So yeah, uh, who should Beth agrees? Yeah, Crow and War is very powerful. Almost a mirror breaker in, in uh, this instance. As a red cap melee is drawn, we'll be able to take care of a threat on the other side of the battlefield. But I like this from Gavin. Just going to keep swinging, keep attacking, try and get Arna Hushinbet down as low as possible. Yeah, and a little unfortunate to not draw a land there. And yeah, we see mm -hmm. the second thought there because you can Ember Cleave if it's uh, a little bit more valuable. I guess it's still, it's eight damage compared to four. Um, but Gavin has other plans for for his mana, it looks like. Yeah, going for Eska's Chariot, copying the cat. So Kitty Cat will be back on blocking duty. We'll have Fire Prophecy as well as Red Cap Melee available, even without the fifth land. Second chapter goes off, and uh, there's another Magda Brazen Outlaw for Arne Hushinbet. Not really the card you want to be double upping, or doubling mm -hmm. up on, but... Uh, at least one of them is is pretty powerful. That's kind of interesting there um, to not want to Ember Cleave the last turn. If we had eight damage, we'd be at five. Yeah, I guess that's still fine. I was saying getting in range of uh, that missile to be able to deal three mm -hmm. damage. Um, definitely something to consider here. Right, Cap Melee. Just taunting Gavin and be like, just kill it. But because it's not a red creature, he would have to sack a land, and that's not something he wants to do right now. So the 5-5 five five is going to come on through. Take a good old chunk of his life away. Goes down to eight, and here comes the Cadillac. Yeah, this is really looking that th like that um, that second level on Rangers class has has really put Gavin in a tough spot here. Mm -hmm. Having that five five wolf out there, you know, no removal is really dealing with that. And we're gonna have a forced in attack here, where there's gonna be two nice blockers where you can crew the chariot with the two cats and then block Bone Crusher. So. Pretty nice attack, but yeah, let's see if we can just kill stuff and then just get the cleave ready, actually. Yeah. This... Believe in the cleave. Magic missile, perhaps, going back? I mean, we well, actually red cap melee going away. No? no or neither. Just... Yeah, because you red cap yeah. melee this, and then next turn you can crew chariot with two of the cats and attack with the cat. Attack yeah. with both? Even if the 2-2 two -two cat goes in front of chariot, that's 10 damage. Which tramples over. That's eight. Yeah. The other cat is two. That's ten. I yeah. see lethal. I think Gavin sees it as well. Oh, yeah. Cat's going to pick up an Ember Cleave. <laughs> and uh, Arna knows the writing is on the wall. The Ember Cleave is on the board. And uh, this is going to hurt. Yep. Yeah, that's really rough because we could have left that giant wolf back. And, you know, <laughs> that's going to that's gonna lead to a little regret there. But... On Hushinbeth's defense there, mm -hmm. he he factored in one removal spell and Embercleave in the math. Yeah. Didn't really factor in the two instant speed removals and Embercleave. So, of course, while that is very possible, um, it, it's a lot tougher to, to have all of those things. The cleave giveth and the cleave taketh away. <laughs> yes. 
We've got so, two Cleve believers here, uh, you know, so it's, it's only going to work for one on a given game. <laughs> Let's jump into game number three here. Arna and Gavin both at a game apiece here, and these matches, they go by super duper fast. So they let's really see do. how quickly this one is going to end. Yeah, these matches go by really fast, and I'm sure their heart, re heart rates are just as fast here with, <laughs> with so much on the line in these games. Oh yeah, this is, this is super stressful stuff. Now, just a reminder, both of these players are through to day three, but you yes. want to be in that top four. You want to make it as easy as possible for yourself to make it into the World Championship. And this is what is at stake. Exactly. 1-1 one, one from Heart's Desire. Chips in for one point of damage. Edgewell Innkeeper is not interested in blocking at all. Is most likely going to die to a stomp. And both players are just going to trade some stomps there. Pretty nice draw from Hushinbeth being able to go Bone Crusher Giant into Azika's Chariot here. That is just a nice curve. Gavin's draw is a little mm. bit more risky, but when you're on the draw in these Gruul matches, I actually really like the keep because you want to be a little bit of the control player. So having a ton of burning hands, a ton of melees, ton of fire prophecies, it's really not that bad. But of course, the Azika's Chariot is the biggest problem card for this kind of hand, and yeah. that's going to be a harsh reality next turn. Yeah, so Fire Prophecy will be able to dig one card deeper, get rid of the threat on the battlefield. I wouldn't hate to see Ox go away here. Needs to find a land drop, and it looks like he's going to go for Red Cap Melee. Back into the library. Oh, changes his mind. It's going to be Ox of Agonis. Hey, there we go. Yeah, you know, Gavin was just like, can I just put that into the graveyard instead of at, my, at the bottom? Yeah. That would be much so more helpful for my ox. Discard Fire Prophecy, come on. The nice thing, like you mentioned, being the defensive player in this instance, um, he does have access to the Burning Hands, and that is a very clean answer to the Lovestruck Beasts, the Gargaroths even. That's not in this matchup, but Eska's Chariot will be taken care of before it can start copying cats. And here's the pinch that you get put in here. Do you just hold up removal and hope that Hushinbeth crews up this chariot and you're able to burning hands this? Or are you going to recognize that, you know, Arna is such a great player that he's not really going to fall for that. And he's just going to mm -hmm. attack with these cats if you leave open a bunch of mana. So I love this play by Gavin. Oh. Just really, oh my, that's a draw. And then I saw her face. Mm -hmm. I'm a Bacleaver. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh, that's so icky. I love it. That was unbelievable. And uh, one short of being able to cast it, but does keep up the burning hands. So the kitty car can survive. Yeah, interesting. Offering up a trade of some variety here on the chariot, but I guess if we're just going so wide that you can kind of disguise this Embercleave for now <laughs> and uh, really just use it to a, a very, very successful limit tomorrow or next turn tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, yes. The, yes. These turns will not will go that long. Tomorrow, too. <laughs> there is a time limit on these matches. Please do not panic. Here comes Essica's chariot. It's going to jump in the way here and it's going to meet an unlike one. And timely end in burning hands, and uh, that hurt. That hurt. Not being able to soak up any of that damage, not killing anything. Gavin is in a big, big trouble here. Yep, this is going to be a, a tricky game to win here. Going to have to be holding back a lot of pieces of removal in case of cleave. Gavin Thompson really has to go into a defensive mode here and just mm -hmm. really just say, all right, I need to I need to kill everything and hope that that's enough. And <laughs> Hushinbeth has the exact opposite uh, mentality here. Yeah, while well, you've got it, use it. Burning Hands will take care of these creatures. Ember Cleave is online. A crow in war even could come down and steal one of these cats. Yeah, kill really him, kill him quick. I think I would really like to see from Hushinbeth's side is leaving that chariot back this turn mm -hmm. and just kind of getting in there with the cats, strapping up an ember cleave to one of them and just making Gavin pick apart each of the tutus 
before you get to just give away the Azika's chariot here to mm-hmm. one of these burning hands or red cap melee. Tough decision here. Very. So there's also some thought to just going a Cron War, taking one of these cats and just attacking with the three cats. That way you only lose one of them to the trade. And then, yeah, if you want a Burning Hands one, fine. Then you still have some cats to crew the chariot next turn. Yeah. That's the other interesting line. I think I like the Cleave one a little bit better. Here come the kitty cats. Cats are going to block. Ember Cleave is going to make its way down on the battlefield. Equip itself to one of these kittens. And it's going to meet in some timely end in a Burning Hands. So two damage coming on through. Down to ten goes Gavin. And the follow-up Ooh. play of the Despair Sentinel. And there's an Akron War. Ooh. That's a big draw. That is a really big draw. We'll see if Gavin wants to deploy that this turn or do a little bit more of a disguise play where you can go, let's say, Lovestruck Beast plus Red Cap Melee, something mm-hmm. that... RNA tries to equip. The problem with that is all these creatures are green, so you're going to have to lose one of these lands, and then a Crow and War can't be cast the following turn, so that is a bit of a, a liability there. I kind of like the idea of stealing the cat with a Crow and War, because then, if there isn't a follow-up creature, cat car is stuck for a turn. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a very high-risk, high-reward play, uh, but can really punish you if there is, let's say, a Lovestruck Beast in Hushin Beth's hand or something like that. And Arnie's going to be quite happy to see this Lovestruck Beast. That is pretty much the ideal target for an Akroan War. Yeah, that's going to be a juicy target right there. Yeah, because it's steel. Oh, hey, Lovestruck Beast, you want to hop in the Cadillac? Cool, let's go for a drive. <laughs> And now we decide if we just want to crow and war that love struck beast and then be able to attack with Azika's chariot. I kind of like that just because yes. with only the one red mana available, Arnie knows that, you know, if, if there is a removal spell for the Cadillac, it's going to come at a heavy cost mm-hmm. of having to sacrifice one of these lands being red cap melee as the only possible removal spell here. This is getting good. Oh, yeah. And the cheeky thing that um, Essica's Chariot can do, too, is copy either the cat or the treasure token, treasure, giving the yes. two red mana for, or the two mana for the Bone Crusher Giant to stomp out this cat. Yeah, exactly. We got the Jaspera Sentinel as well, but oh yeah, just taking the big mm. cost of just letting it die now. I think you have to and kind of hope to draw land. Or, you know, your consolation prize is casting a Bone Crusher Giant, uh, maybe a Burning Hands or something like that. So it's not all bad if we don't hit a land, but a land for the Akron War would be pretty nice. Oh yeah. Bone Crusher Giants is going to take care of the cat, stomping it out of there. Down to eight goes Gavin. There's a ranger class, it's not a land, so Crow and War won't be a factor this turn, and things are looking super good here for Arna Hushin Bet in the first of three matches. Yeah, this is looking really, really so strong, and we do have that Jaspera Sentinel as well for that fancy trick that we've been seeing all day of when it does come to Chapter 3, instead of giving that Love Struck back, tap it so it is tapped and deals damage to itself, um, but remember, you got to keep, uh, you got to make sure you put a stop up. So it yeah. could be a potential nightmare scenario if uh, Arne forgets about that. I'm going to do it now and equip the Embercleave to the cat. And this is going to work out quite nicely for Gavin. Not going to take any damage and we'll be able to burning hands the kitty cat. Yeah, not able to attack with the love struck piece. So makes sense there. But yeah, a nice use of that. Bone Crush a Giant to follow up play, so things still looking pretty good here for Arne, but Gavin is holding on. And we see that little circle on the top of our screen. Hushin Beth, of course, did not forget. <laughs> that is the stop ready to make sure we can tap that creature. If given the option, we can actually a Crow and War the Jaspera Sentinel yeah. here. And then get two Ooh. creatures. Yeah, that and then swing this it, game very much in uh, Gavin's favor. Oh, yeah, that could be Do a it. really nice play. Oh. Unfortunately, not doesn't take the tapper. 
So uh, this Lovestruck Beast is probably going to die here to the Jaspera Sentinel tap. I would imagine. Well, this game is close. Jaspera Sentinel got a big booty, so it survives. And a Crone War can just come back down and, you know, steal this Bone Crusher Giant. We also have Den available mm -hmm. to just crew and attack. That would just be three damage, and then the Bone Crusher Giant just blocks the 1-1, one, one, so that is not ideal. Kind of seems like this is Hushin Best is the only real good play, so I think I would agree with a, a Crow and War here. Yeah. Mine. No mine. No mine. <laughs> Gavin just has to have a chuckle at that. Okay, here come the lands. Not ideal. Can't double spell here, unfortunately. Can't get the Den of the Bugbear up. Can make a wolf, but that's not going to do it. And wow. Arnett Hushinbet is going to win the very first match here in this best of three matches to determine our final four player in the top four. So, Corey. Extremely close. Extremely close the so whole close. way. They got uh, they got a lot more magic to play, and it's going to gonna be just as close, I imagine. So excited to see the conclusion of these two. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then uh, we will be back with the second match of this tiebreaker. We'll see you soon. And welcome back to coverage here of the Challenger Gauntlet. Marshall Sutcliffe with Luis Scott Vargas. And uh, we saw the first of the best of three uh, best of three tiebreaker matches end in Arne Huchenbet's favor. 
and we're going to see who's going to take down the second one here. Will it be Arna to take this thing down, or will it be Gavin Thompson to strike back and force another match to decide it? You can take a look at the list one more time, just in case you haven't seen them. They're both on Gruel Adventures. And with that, let's get into match number two. So we're back to a uh, game one scenario here. No sideboards need apply. And uh, who won the die roll? Um, Hard to say just yet. I think it's Gavin, though. Looks like a mulligan here from... Yeah, Arne, Arne is mulling here, and it looks like Gavin is on the play. Okay. Which, uh, as we've seen many times, really presses the advantage when it comes to something like Ember Cleave or Sika's Chariot. Both those cards really give you a lot of extra value on the play. Even Ranger class here. Yeah. Ah, the loser actually gets to choose whether they're on the play or draw, so unsurprisingly, Gavin decided to be on the play. This is one of those rare games where you get to play a turn two Magda and it doesn't immediately die to a Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, it's weird because it, we've seen basically every turn one or two turn two play just get stomped. And look at Gavin. He's like, hey, I get to keep this Magda around? It's, it's a pretty big game because generating that treasure when Ooh. your hand has Chariot and Goldspan Dragon, huge. He also just found Snakeskin Veil. <laughs> Can use that as a removal spell here. Oh man, Snakeskin Veil has gotten him a lot of mileage over the course of this tournament, and uh, it's pretty cool seeing it come up here. Yeah, as it stands, Arne just says, sure, but he can't feel great about Magda starting to kind of generate this short-term mana advantage repeatedly already. We see Gavin Thompson capitalize on that with a Seekus Chariot here on turn three, and that Magda is still around. I mean, a turn three Chariot, both players have it, but we just as we discussed in the beginning, the fact that uh, Gavin was on the play means that uh, his gets the first attack, which often means it gets the, the first bit of value. Wow, there's an Ember Cleave too. And don't forget about the Snakeskin Veil for Thompson as well. As well. Unfortunately for Gavin, he's missing his fourth land. So things aren't as easy as they could have been. If he had just drawn a land and uh, been able to, to really leverage his advantage. I think that would have been different, but he's still got a lot of good plays to make, and this Magda could generate him another treasure, main phase even, thanks to crewing the chariot. So if he crews up the chariot attacks with, <clears throat> with his remaining creature plus a chariot, he can Ember Cleave, right? He would be able to it maybe telegraph the Ember Cleave a little bit, but that's not uh, the end of the world because a telegraphed Ember Cleave still hits really hard. Yeah, it's funny. Ember Cleave, I remember when it first came out and, and it was like, well, maybe I could play around it or whatever. And it was, it's just like, you, you can't. <laughs> like you could, I could just show it to you, but it doesn't change much. All right, well, let's see what, what Gavin does here. He's going to use Magda and a cat to crew his chariot. And he's going to play Ranger class this turn as well. He's also jamming with the other two cats. And considering making a copy of his treasure token. No, he's Not making a, a copy of his treasure token. <laughs> wow. So this gives him access to Ember Cleave right now. Re re really nice play here. This is sick stuff from Gavin Thompson. Wow, this Magda has had a huge impact on the game. He's going to throw the cleave on the blocked cat, which is going to take down the chariot, even get in for a couple of damage. And down to 10 goes Arne Hushinbet. He is getting smashed here from this uh, turn two Magda by Gavin Thompson. What a play. Yeah, th this has worked out really nicely. The Magda plus the into chariot, chariot crewing the Magda, copying the the token, the treasure token to cast Ember Cleave. It's definitely got the initiative, but well, Ar Arnie's going to try and turn that around as fast as possible. Yeah, he even snuck Ranger class in there somehow <laughs> as part of that equation. And by the way, Gavin missed a land drop too. Like, this is incredible. Okay, Arne plays Goldspan Dragon and attacks with it. Ooh, there's Shatter Skull smashing. A land off the top here. This looks l very close to lethal, if not lethal, by putting Cleave on the, the Chariot and then 
And then using Snakeskin Veil, does that get you there? Let's see, there's four toughness back plus an additional two two blocker able or excuse me, attacker. And then you can then oh, you can also cast power. fire prophecy. Oh, to take well, out the blocker? Thanks wow. to copying the token. Incredible. So that's 12, 14. Yep, no, this looks like G Gavin's a lot of fancy plays here, but you know what? Sometimes that just means that you're making a good play. Yeah, you know, in that first game, he looked... I, I couldn't quite tell, but his mannerisms made me think that he thought he was winning the game and then miscounted. And in this game, he's just came up with these absurd lines of play <laughs> to earn him the victory here. All Arna could do is just look on as he takes lethal damage from Masika's chariot and Gavin Thompson with some pretty shifty moves there comes up with the <laughs> He didn't win. even need the snakeskin veil. He didn't even need it. <laughs> wow, that was cool. Magda ramping out treasure and then copying treasure. And a quick victory for him as the players will now consult their sideboards as we head into game number two. And let's not forget, you know, Gavin needs these wins. If, if Arne is to win this match, it's over. And we see no turn one play here for Arne on the play, but uh, but Gavin does have one. He's got Heart's Desire and then passes the turn back. You see the Bone Crusher Giant sitting there for Hushinbeb. We see that a lot. And no other real play here for Gavin, so he's just going to pass the turn back, and Arne has to decide, well, if I'm going to be playing this Bone Crusher Giant next turn anyway, I may as well stomp this 1-1. One, one. Moment of tension there for Arne, because if Gavin had his own Bone Crusher, then he could actually Bone Crusher it in, in, itself in response and uh, deny the adventure, but this is still going to work out reasonably well. Yeah, he didn't have that, so Arnie's going to just cast Bone Crusher, but Fire Prophecy is going to take care of it. And that's also going to get Gavin a card deeper into his library as one of the forests is going to get put on the bottom, and he finds an Ember Cleave. Okay. And all that being said, he's got Lovestruck Beast this turn, then a Seeker's Chariot, and then you got to <laughs> figure that Ember Cleave can just get the job done, right? What is nice about this Lovestruck as well is that it can it can block Asika's Chariot pretty nicely. So you, mm. your turn three play kind of covers their, the turn four play. But that Goldspan Dragon on, on Arnie's side, that's going to be a pretty big threat if it uh, can ever pick up an Ember Cleave, which it's not that far away from doing. Yeah, both of the players really unloading the heavy hitters now. Asika's Chariot for both players, and then it's going to be Goldspan Dragon into Ember Cleave here for Arna. And on the other side, there's an Ember Cleave waiting as well. And remember, Gavin has the Love Strike Beast already. So Arnie's going to do first things first. Crew up the Chariot and cast Goldspan Dragon. Now, he can't attack with the Chariot now, though, right? Yeah, I think he is kind of realizing that if you look at him, because oh yeah, he's going to end up in a spot where if he attacks with the uh, the chariot, then he just blocks with the love struck beast, and uh, he's not he he did, I think he might have done the ember cleave math, assuming maybe that those cats were also attacking. Right, because he's going to be a couple of mana short, even with the treasure off of the dragon. Okay, now it's time to regroup here for Arna. This is not how he actually thought this turn was going to go. He thought the Chariot was going to safely attack into the Beast and that he could fire off Ember Cleave if there was a block. And instead, he's just going to basically say, okay, I'm going to tap these two cats, you know, for free. Just don't need well, them. Well, you know what's worse than uh, making a mistake and committing to it is is making a mistake, realizing it, and still doing it. It's better to look like a fool than to make a play that demonstrates you're a fool. That's right. And and and, and Arne has been playing fantastic this whole weekend. The fact that he 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 made the he he kind of made a little misstep here, realized it, and pulled back from it. That just gives makes me respect him more rather than less. I'm just glad we have you here, the expert in both of those topics. <laughs> Break this oh, looking like a fool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do have a lot of practice with that, I will tell you that. 
All right, Asika's Chariot's going to get fired up, and boom, into the red zone here. It's going to come in for eight damage, no blockers on the other side, thanks to that blunder from Arne. Is it not quite lethal here? 10, 14, not quite. Not quite, but th the thing is, this isn't like the game we saw earlier where uh, Gavin w was like a point off of lethal and then ended up losing. He's got a lot that he can do here that's going to end up uh, giving him an advantage where he, he doesn't need to present lethal this turn to win the game. Right, so he's going to throw this on a cat to save him future mana. He does get a little bit less damage in now, but I think he just says, well, this is going to end, you know, within the next turn or two if I'm winning this game anyway. So here comes Edgewall Innkeeper, and he's actually going to play Shatter Skull, the hammer pass here, so he can keep up Red Cat Melee, and he's going to fire it off on the Goldspan Dragon right now as well. What a turn here for Gavin. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're if you Arne and you see that paying three life on the Shatter Skull is the last land drop, you know what's coming. Right. Paying three life is such a big cost, no one would ever do it as a bluff. Right, there's just nothing nothing else in the, in the list that could matter there. Also interesting to note here that Gavin's drawn his sideboard Magic Missile, and, uh, you know, just in case he could use that to finish off Arne as well, but he's really built up a massive attack force here. But things could get interesting, right? You see the Burning Hands for Arne. If there's a big attack here from Gavin, let's say the Burning Hands takes out whatever has the, the Ember Cleave on it, he could still just sneak in for some damage with a couple of the cats and then finish him off with the uh, missile. And that that's looking fairly likely as a, uh as one of the ways this game finishes. We also, as always, I mean, I don't think we've seen a game yet where one of the players didn't have a creature land lying around. And, you know, if Gavin wants to attack with a Den of the Bugbear, Lair of the Hydra, that's definitely on the table as well. Right. Arn is burning timeouts. He's actually out of them now, so he'll have to make a decision before he gets uh, roped at this point. But uh, the way it looks right now, that may not be relevant anyway because he is in a world of trouble here in our second match. Is he because Chariot's going to get crude? There's the attack. Block with a cat. You don't want to lose to something like Embercleave plus Bone Crusher, and I think this this keeps you safe from that that outcome. That's right. You would still be at one, even if there's a Bone Crusher in addition to Embercleave. And remember, Gavin doesn't know any of the cards in hand for Arnis, so this is all theoretical from his side. So even if Burning Hands takes down the, the Ember Cleaved Cat or maybe the Chariot, all that has to get through and the Love Stroke gets chumped. Yeah, it, it's it's possible that Gavin doesn't have lethal on his turn thanks to his Burning Hands, but that also means that Arne might not be able to deploy the Ember Cleave like he wants to. Yeah, let's see what happens here. There's a land off the top there for Thompson. Can he create an additional attacker and still cast Magic Missile here? <laughs> yeah, you can attack with a 1-1 layer of the Hydra. And, I wonder if uh, that's enough. Assume, so, you know, if you're in his seat, you have to assume the cat dies. If it doesn't, you're just going to win anyway, right? Yeah, I think it actually go, does the last point because you, you assume here, well, Arna does have his own layer of the Hydra, so maybe this game's not quite over because you if you attack with everything, you would end up uh, in a spot where you would the Lair of the Hydra would prevent you from getting lethal through. But the other thing is, I didn't make that much forward progress last turn, so what may happen this turn if Arne has to, like, Burning Hands, the cat that has the Ember Cleave, chump Lovestruck Beast, chump the Sika's Chariot, that's not really a game you're losing. And then maybe you fire off Magic Missile on one of the remaining cats just to be safe. Right. Gavin Thompson has all of the options available. He uses his three smallest creatures to crew up the chariot that's going to get him in 
and of course also give him another blocker just in case he doesn't finish off the game this turn. But if Arne decides to take really any risk whatsoever, the Magic Missile's kind of a curveball getting in for three to the face potentially. And it's the sort of thing where if Arne was winning, he would maybe be, have the luxury of playing around a Magic Missile or, or a Stomp or something like that. But because he's so far behind... I'm not sure what Arnie's going to do, but he is less likely to try to play around anything. He just doesn't have the the wiggle room to do that. Okay, here comes Layer of the Hydra. That's going to chump block. That's going to chump block. And then we're assuming that the Burning Hand is going to take down the Cat with the Ember Cleave. But as you mentioned, this really puts Arnie in a difficult position to actually try to find a win here. Remember, it's not just about surviving. Sure, he might be able to survive for a turn, maybe even another turn after that. But if he's losing his board state every turn, his outs are dwindling to the point that he may not have the ability to win the game regardless of what he draws. What Arne might do here, which uh, I think I kind of like, is just block like this and then burning hands the uh, the, rumi the untapped cat to try to go for a win on your turn if you draw any creature. Unfortunately for him, he's going to lose to Magic Missile, but I still think that was just the right play. He's playing yeah. to win. He's not playing to not lose. Oh, wow. And it looks like Arne may have been caught off guard by the Magic Missile here. I don't think he saw that coming. And he says, uh, you know, he could have played around it. I... I kind of agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> did you have fun this match, Gavin? Yes, yeah, yes, I, I sure did. <laughs> While his opponent is reeling from the loss that he just took, he went ahead and, and clicked the smiley face on there. Wow, what a victory there for Gavin. He forces the third and deciding match. We're going to have that for you right after this break.
Welcome back to the Challenger Gauntlet. We are in tiebreak mode. Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and we have seen two matches so far between Arne Husenbet and Gavin Thompson. It has been a slugfest of note with haymakers flying left and right, and we've got one whole more match to go, Corey. What are you expecting in this one? God, you know, I'm just expecting for another lightning fast match that is going to be expertly played from both sides. But man, blink and you miss it. And these games are over. They go so quick. I am super impressed by Gavin Thompson. I mean, he's he's, like he's so low-key, the, the dark horse in this tournament. Yeah. You know, just cruising through with this Gruel Adventure deck. And uh, Arne Hushenbet has been reeling from some of the plays that we've seen so far. As both players take a look at their opening hands, that's a bit of a yikes from Gavin. So he's going to send that one back and hopefully find some green. There we go. That looks far better. Oh, he's yeah, very happy about that. I almost spit out my soda when he copied that treasure and never cleaved. I'm not going to lie. That was so <laughs> awesome. I was like, nice play, Gavin. Yeah, sometimes you forget that uh, good old kitty car can copy any token on the battlefield. So Cadillac's too good. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get things going here as Arne Hushenbeth kicks us off. He's jamming along to something. Getting himself in the zone. Love struck beast. Heart's desire down the battlefield. And a bit of a few. A big Gavin. few there for Gavin. You needed that second land. Otherwise, this was going to be a bit of an embarrassing game. But Gavin set himself up quite nicely for innkeeper into Ooh. stomp this turn. One of, the, one of the ideal plays. I mean, you really want that Jaspera Sentinel into Magda in to do things. Uh -huh. But this is definitely the second best. Oh, man. That was such a good draw. Two lands off the top. Having access to removal, Magda is such a powerful card, and uh, Bone Crusher Giant is going to make quick work of it with Stomp. All right, still some nice plays up top from Arne Hushenbeth. Be able to drop this Love Struck Beast, get get the serious pressure going, or trying to uh, use some removal on either Edgewine Keeper or Jaspera Sentinel. We can see that face of Bone Crusher, so there's definitely some thought mm. to just taking that out before Gavin can draw some cards, but I like getting the 5-5 five, five down as well. Yeah, being on the play, Arn is, you know, the onus is on him to deliver the beats and mm -hmm. make Gavin deal with the threats that he's presenting, but not having dealt with those two Ooh. creatures results in a turn three Essica's Chariot. And that card has been an absolute powerhouse this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And I really like this mana management from Gavin here, being able to play a Zika's Chariot here and then next turn go Bone Crusher Giant plus Fire Prophecy something is going to be a really nice kind of one-two punch here. So uh, nice mana efficiency from Gavin. See in chat, there are plenty of frogs being spammed right now in support of Gavin Thompson, known as Alpha Frog on MTGO. <laughs> now, is Alpha Frog just get rog? Ooh, just that's a good point. On that. There's a very powerful frog. Well, yeah. clearly Alpha Frog is Gavin, so I think Gavin yes. would have words for you about saying there's a better frog. Would would be my approach mm. to it, but, but we'll see. All right, sure. <laughs> well, uh, let's see if he can continue to assert his dominance here. Both players are at a match apiece. And this is the decider. And so we work our way into the mid game here. Pretty good board states from both players set up. But uh, I'm going to say I kind of like where Gavin's sitting right now. Yeah, see, I was kind of going to say the opposite. I'm really mm -hmm. liking Hushenbeth just having that 5-5 five, five to kind of brick everything. We can two-for-one ourselves, essentially, and get through and attack with Azika's Chariot as well. But, oh, oh yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, well, I guess without playing a land, you aren't able to represent Embercleave, so this seems kind of like a no-brainer block. I was going to say, if you can represent it, then it gets a little tougher to block here. But I, I think you just kind of have to if you're Arne Hushenbeth. If Arne had, like, Embercleave here, you're pretty tempted to hold it back, but I like this block. Yeah. Either has the option of going for the Shadow Skull Smashing, which uh, seems to be the case, as Very you can nice kill play. two birds with one stone, as <laughs> Lovestruck Beast and Maga are both dealt with, leaving just the one one behind, but there's a second Lovestruck Beast. And the Edgewell Innkeeper, it's a refill here. And now things are looking pretty darn good for Arna. Yeah, I feel like we're just going to be saying back and forth so often that these these games kind of switch who's really far yeah. ahead. Is. It's just both players are, are playing at such a high level. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously the mirror match has a factor as well, playing the <laughs> exact same cards. Super swingy indeed, but here's something that could definitely break this mirror in Goldspan Dragon. 
able to fire it off, make a treasure, and have Fire Prophecy up and available for him. Is he going to go for it? Big draw. Big draw right there. Being able to play Goldfan, like you said, and then make sure to hold that stop in combat, take out Bone Crusher Giant, and then you're attacking for eight. You don't want to block with Edgewall Innkeeper. I, I think this seems like a no-brainer play. This is an excellent draw. Yeah, you see the eyebrows raised from Arne Hushimbet <laughs> there. That is a bad start if you're oh, yeah. just trying to defend the ground with Lovestruck Beast and Bone Crusher Giants. Yeah, he's just like, I just rebuilt this board and everything is now dead. There's cats and dragons on the other side of the battlefield and Gavin is sitting pretty right now. But uh, Arna's not out of it yet. Still has the Edgewell Innkeeper, is able to remove something. But this dragon is going to make quick work of this battlefield if he doesn't deal with it. So has to find something meaningful here. Finds a Shadow Skull smashing. So next turn would be able to take care of the dragon. Has to survive. <coughs> Do that though. Yep, just uh, the straight six mana deal with Goldspan Dragon. And I mean, that was a great draw. We did need something like that because the ground is pretty gummed up here, mm -hmm. where it is pretty tough to get through with these cats. Even the Bone Crusher Giant isn't great. So if you can deal with this Goldspan Dragon, we put advantage slightly back into Hushinbeth's side. So really yep. anyone's game. Yep, and Gavin just dumping everything out. He is handless right now. Grancy still has both hands, but. Uh... <laughs> it's just getting as much mana down the battlefield to do as much as possible the next turn. Bone Crusher Giant and Shadow Skull Smashing available to Arna to try and clear out some of this battlefield. Yeah, and one mana away from being able to take a Bone Crusher Giant with this Goldspan Dragon, so that's a little unfortunate. But I totally agree with Hushin Beth here. You just don't really have the time to wait and take another mm -hmm. hit for four. It's already bad enough that Ember Cleave is, is very likely to close up this game. So just kind of hanging on here on Hoochin' Best side. Yeah. Oh, wanted to go for the big swing, decided against it. It's going to sit back and wait. And there is Shadow Skull smashing for wow. Gavin Thompson. Okay. So, yeah, we can tap a cat and get rid of all the treasures to get rid of Lovestruck Beast and Innkeeper. Mm -hmm. And then attack with Bone Crusher Giant and two cats. That's attacking for lethal and a forcing some kind of bad block. That was an unbelievable draw. Outside of Emberclave, that had to have been the second best draw. Yeah, just uh, getting rid of these massive creatures on the battlefield. It's going to go for the full six. That will double the damage dealt. You know, just, just extra dead. Just in case, yeah, double just, it up. Even though you only needed the actual six without the yeah. double claws, it still looks better to yeah. deal nine and three. That's far more fun. Oh, yeah, Hushin yeah. is just like, can you please stop drawing these really good cards? I think that's, uh, you know, a, a little bit, I, I'll do a little translating of, of what he's saying to himself there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. So Gavin Thompson picks up the victory there in the first game of match number three. Still two to go. Arn is not out of it. He just needs to recoup, gather his thoughts, and see what he can do. But Gavin Thompson is just absolutely wrecking. Yeah. He is very, very comfortable with his deck and pilots it beautifully. Beautifully, absolutely. And it seemed like just five minutes ago we were saying, all right, now Gavin Thompson's really up against it. Has to win the next two matches. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Gavin's one win away from being put into the top four and a nice head shake there because that hand is pretty much perfect. Oh, yes, indeed it is. Going to get things underway here. Heart's Desire, 1-1 one, one down the battlefield for Arne. Will we see the same from Gavin or is he going to risk it for the biscuit and get Edgewell Innkeeper down? Nothing to uh, benefit off of the draw on turn number two. Interesting. Putting okay. a bit of a high equity on maybe dealing with something like a Magda on turn two, so you can still play Lovestruck Beast on turn three. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Sure. So really nice foresight there by Gavin Thompson. Yeah. Getting rid of Magda. Going to send back a Shadow Skull smashing, it seems like. Let's see what the draw is here for Gavin to just keep applying the pressure. Finds another forest, so we'll be able to, unless there's removal drawn, we'll be able to get a card off of Lovestruck Beast and Edgewell Innkeeper next turn. There's a Burning Hands. Is it worth it to do? Yeah, it decides not. Yeah, let's get as much wow. pressure down as possible. Here comes Lovestruck Beast. There's an extra card. 
and another land off the top. And Azika's Chariot there was a great draw as well. But no land there from Arne. That was huge. Being a If we had an untapped land, being able to attack with Lovestruck Beast and just jam that Embercleave could have really set the pace where yep. Gavin now has to just hold back and wilt the Embercleave or something like that. And all of a sudden you're in the defensive. But now Gavin just gets to go Azika's Chariot, which Arne doesn't have a great answer for. No, not currently. And look at this block, something you don't normally see, but this block is actually awesome for a few reasons. Because if that 1-1 one, one didn't get in there, next turn, if Arne drew a land, was able to attack with both of these and Emberclave, but now there's no possibility of... Oh, never mind, we can just play this 1-1. One, one. So yeah, if we get a land, we can still do that play, excuse yeah. me. If it wasn't was blocked, though, and he didn't draw a land, there would be three creatures, and he could still Emberclave with three lands, missing That's the fourth land drop. Let's find it's it though, so it's irrelevant either way, as the Blight Step pathway is drawn off the top of the deck. Now, just take a minute, breathe, relax. Okay, good call. Yes. <sighs> Corey, right, that was, that that was that for you, not the players. Okay, yeah, that's what I was saying. I, yeah. I, I needed that reminder. I'm at the edge of my seat here. This is intense. So I want to remind the players, winning into this top four means that you can 1-1 one, one tomorrow into the World Championship. Mm -hmm. Loser has to three out of the world championship. That's a big difference. Very big indeed. What is going to be the play here for Arne Hushenbeth, who is behind at the moment? Gavin Thompson is just one win away from that top four. Mm, interesting. Not trying to do any Ember Cleave action, just trying to set up a bigger battlefield here with Lovestruck Beast. I'm a fan. Mm hmm. The one thing that's pretty awkward from Gavin's side is that Den is the only other second red source. So we don't have Shatter Skull Smashing available. Not that it would be super effective, um, but definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs> Love struck beast just hanging in midair right now, waiting to get dropped down. <laughs> it's the battlefield, and there is going to be the seer step pathway. Okay, there is the red source, but wondering if it even wants to be played right now. I guess we get to do the nice little play that we saw Gavin do before, and that's mm -hmm. through this Ezekiel's cherry. Get in there. And kill two things. An Ember Cleave with the second red source, or just Shatter Skull Smashing, deal with Lovestock and the 1 1 token. Yeah. I love this play from Gavin. So, Gavin not playing a red source is just saying, hey, I don't have Ember Cleave. So, yeah. I dare you to block. And the block is actually really good for Gavin. This was an excellent play. Yeah, we've seen this twice now. It's so clever. <sighs> Honestly, it. it... You got to think, maybe this um, shouldn't have been blocked and take some damage, but it feels mm -hmm. so bad to uh, take Azika's Chariot and then you get to Chariot again, but I'm... I mean, Chariot, I think, has to be dealt with, but just Gavin being so heads up, yeah. not playing that second red source, tricking Arna into thinking everything's cool, it's fine, it's clear, and then mm -hmm. getting that two for one, it's awesome. And if we didn't block the Azika's Chariot, Gavin, of course, is just going to leave open mana and wilt the Ember Cleave, so it wouldn't have been GG on the spot. But attacking with two 5-5s five there into just one untapped cat is pretty good. <laughs> and we have seen that preserving life total in this mirror match is it's paramount, because you can just die out of nowhere. Ember Cleave is a killer. It really is. And now are we going to see the cleave? <laughs> we shall cleave indeed, as uh, <laughs> Lovestruck Beast is going to jump in the way of Magda here. Ember Cleave will make it trade with the Lovestruck Beast, so those two creatures will say bye-bye. Gavin having Ember Cleave on the radar as well. He's like, okay, I was just trying to do this trick as well. Are, are, you, <laughs> are you doing it right back? Yeah, looks like it. I love this, just the quadruple block on Magda. 
I like this because on surface value, this Ember Cleave just puts it to six total power essentially on Magda. And that is still only killing Lovestruck Beast and dealing one damage to a cat. So instead of just blocking with Lovestruck Beast, you soak up an extra damage and you lose nothing else. So a really nice block here from Gavin. I've been really impressed with Gavin this uh, set of matches here. Yeah, he's played everything superbly well. Mm -hmm. What Was there ever consideration to kill all three cats instead of the Lovestruck Beast? Definitely a consideration. Um, it does maximize the amount of damage that you deal to the creatures. So you would get, you know, you'd use all six points of damage. Yeah, totally viable. Because whiteboard is scary. Yeah. And that's exactly what Gavin's doing right now. Is Den of the Bugbear is going to jump in here and uh, get to slapping, perhaps. But being at eight, eh, probably not. Oh, never I mind. like it. I, I like it. Because you have Wilt to come back, mm -hmm. there's not too much you lose to that doesn't involve Ember Cleave, right? Like Heart's Desire plus Equip, you have that covered. And then you get yeah. to track back for the win. So it seems like Arne is still going to be in defense mode. And let's see if it's going to be Magda or Ox trying to squeeze out all the value we can. I mean, at this point, maybe Ox is, is correct, just to try and get some more cards. I think so. Magda's not really Magda's yeah, the, not really doing anything here. I think I like being mana efficient and just getting this Ox down. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that one. Magda's nice if you're the aggressor and you're able to tap it and not have to worry about an army of mad cats flying at your face. Yeah, I think I like that as well, especially because this game has been going on for a while. So I assume we at least have like four or five, you know, maybe even more cards in graveyards. So if we block an ox to one of these cats, there might be some world where we get to escape it next turn as well. Here comes the Ox of Agonis. Magda will end up in the bin. And we're going to see three new cards. Okay. Shadow Skull Smashing is a nice find against this wider board. Those were both pretty good cards. Mm. One more land would be Shadow Skull Smashing for six. Not that we really need to kill two big creatures. <laughs> so even just Shadow Skull Smashing for four deals with two creatures here. Next turn would be, which would be pretty powerful. So Arn has done a good job of going up the battlefield here, making it a little bit more difficult to get through. Fire Prophecy is a pretty neat draw here for Gavin. And now it gets a little more complicated from Gavin. We we made that attack last turn because of Menace with the Den, where you weren't going to lose that creature land, and at worst you were just going to lose a 2-2. But now it's a little bit different. You will lose a little bit more with having three creatures back. So you can Fire Prophecy away one of the creatures, but then if you animate Den, then the shields are down for Embercleave. So it seems like this is a turn where you can't really animate your creature land. Then the bugbear just creates the one one. I don't think it is menace. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking of uh, the black the creature. Hive, land yeah, the hive of the eye tyrant. So yeah, I, I'm curious why that wasn't dealt with. Yeah, that is a good point. That that's what I was thinking there. Hmm. Because that's a recurring threat that just keeps you know pooping out little one ones. It's also a threat that you have to commit mana to, and we're even seeing the awkward yeah. of it, awkwardness of it this turn, where you it's pretty tough to commit mana to that and to make sure you don't die. So I think, yeah, this is going to be a turn where just attacks are not great. Another Ember Cleave off the top here for Arna. Does have the Shadow Skull Smashing, will be able to take care of some of these creatures. Does also have the Bone Crusher Giant. So right now, with these um, unfortunate draws from Gavin, it looks like Arna is uh, back in the driver's seat. Yeah, this is a, definitely a back and forth game here. Doesn't look like that ox is highlighted, so I think we're a little bit short on that. And that probably influenced Gavin's no attack as well. Um, you know, being able to ox here is, is pretty brutal. Yeah. So another threat on the battlefield, another threat dealt with on the other side of things. Gavin is floundering a little bit here, staring down... Two pretty big creatures. 
This is big here. If Gavin chooses to wilt the Embercleave, it is not going to work out great for him because of the other Embercleave in hand. And I know Gavin's thinking that as well and makes the nice. correct call. Yeah, he certainly does. Burning hands off the top. That'll deal with the love struck beast. He's still not in the best position right now. Would love to find something to close out this game convincingly. Yeah, Gavin's really looking for another one of those Goldspan Dragons. Even Embercleave is not the best draw, so Goldspan Dragon is really what we're looking for here if we left him in. Yeah, looking for a heavy hitter. These itty-bitty critters are not going to get it done. Just bear a sentinel off the top here for Arna. Arna doesn't have a Lair of the Hydra, so he's not able to get the Lovestruck Beast rocking right now, but Burning Hands obviously in hand there for Gavin would deal with that threat. And you got to think how different this game was if uh, that 1-1 one, one didn't get in there. You just think there's no way a 1-1 one, one is going to be blocked by Edgewall Innkeeper, right? And, and <laughs> you know, Arna, it's not the same thing. And it, it has came back to bite him just a little bit. 10 damage being presented here. The Wilt is in hand for Gavin. Is there a way that he can activate the Den of the Bugbear, double block, and then Wilt away? Well, it doesn't even need to double block, though. The den would just kill the Bone Crusher Giant once Ember cleaves off. Yep, definitely a possibility here. And I think Wilt just kind of has to be cast here, um, which is going to open the door for the Ember Cleave on a Love Struck Beast. Once we find a 1 1, still uh -huh. need that to happen. But yeah, it goes with exactly that play. Yeah, the backup burning hands would be able to prevent the uh, Love Struck Beast Ember Cleave play for the time being so as long as there's no one one doesn't have to worry too much about the second cleave for now but uh a nice exchange here den of the bug bear will take care of the active threat from arnahushan bed and this match has been quite uh, quite different to the ones we've seen previously you know a little a little bit slower a little bit more methodical from both players Yep, absolutely. They just recognize this is the one. This is so much on the line. Mm. And, you know, this kind of happens with these oh. gruel mm. decks. You know, they kind of just go back and forth at some points. You can, of course, have these these draws where one player just goes way over the top and wins mm -hmm. in a convincing fashion. But these type of games can definitely happen. Oh, this is an excellent draw here for Gavin. Another yeah. threat on the board. A counter when he does eventually get to attacking, but more importantly, being able to play cards off the top of the library, creature specifically. But for now, just going to be content with going to class or going to um, yeah. level two. I like burning this. Burning hands. burning hands on the love struck allows you to attack with this cat mm -hmm. now and, and put a counter on it. If you attack with like, you know, let's say, I think you have two options. You can either just attack with cat, make it a 3-3, three, three, which I like the most, or cat and one of the one ones. Uh, and pump it. Oh, I guess we, we didn't have the... Yeah, okay, we did have the mana to pump it. So I like just the 3-3 three, three coming in. Then yeah. these just spare Sentinels are only chumping at best. Arn is going to take it. Goes down to 7. There's the final card in hand. And a Burning Hands will take care of one of these creatures. Oh, man. Some tense moments here. Arne would be able to take care of a couple of these creatures, but this active ranger class with creatures left on the battlefield is going to spell bad news eventually for him. And I see a magical glow over that ox, so that looks to be <laughs> online. That adds some extra complexity to this turn. Because now, if you get ox on the battlefield, I think that's probably the best thing you can be doing. Maybe burning hands a 3-3 three, three before you do that. Maybe even play a land with Shatter Skull Smashing. But then you're losing the Ember Cleave. And that yeah. is a really big cost, but you don't have anything great to put it on right now. So it's not doing a ton, but it would do a ton with the ox, which is, you know, yeah. uh, a little unfortunate. Yeah, I think I like that play. Just burning hand something away, get the Shadow Skull Smashing down as a land, bring back the Ox, you lose the cleave, but you're three cards deeper into your library to find some more relevant threats. And both players under 10 life here, so they both have to be very careful about the crackbacks here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to see Gavin level up this Ranger class here with four of the mana, even if he bricks 
uh, quote unquote, and get to land. At least we get to take another look to see if there's any creatures on top. The one bad thing about these post board games, there are a lot less creatures in the deck since you yeah. play a lot of removal, but uh, still going to be an excellent activation there. Arna, using all the things, is going to go for an Ember Cleave. Ooh, boy. Okay. What do you think of this, Corey? I kind of like it because, like you said, or, you know, like we were talking about, Ember Cleave here on the battlefield is great when you've already lost one of them. You do not play mm -hmm. that many Ember Cleaves. So, Ember Cleave here, put the Shatter Spell smashing it as a land, maybe, and then Burning Hands, one of the creatures. It's definitely a line. If he doesn't block here, can he win on the crackback with a creature dying? I don't think so, because of Shadow Skull Smashing too. Yeah, could take five, but then you lose to some random things, and then you get to attack for three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight. You do win on the crackback if there wasn't a removal spell, but no matter what, Arnie has thought this through, where mm. if there's no blocks, Burning Hands will keep me alive, and this cleaved up creature could win in two turns. So this is a really nice attack. Yep. And that is, I like the, the play of putting it on the just bear sentinel that's being blocked by the two, two. Cause then you at least get to clean up one of those one ones versus mm -hmm. the other way around. Um, you, you would kill one less creature. The good selection there and the burning hands left up, as you mentioned, that will kill the kitty cat. Oh, okay. it's looking pretty good here for Arna. Ranger class. Help Let's out. Go. That's uh, what Gavin's was thinking here. Is there going to be something see? on top? Okay. Oh, Ooh. a crow in war. Can he survive to see it? Most likely. Um, Bone Crusher Giant off the top could present lethal with... Mm -hmm. uh, the Jaspera Sentinel and Ember Cleave, but this was really the turn of reprieve that Arne Hushinbeth really needed to be able to force a game three here. Really needed nothing to hit the battlefield. If there was a, a Lovestruck Beast on the top or something, it would have been a nightmare scenario. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Tense moments here between Arne Hushinbeth and Gavin Thompson, both trying to get that final four, the final fourth spot in the top 12 as we're going to see an attack here just for one or for two with the ranger class yep you're very much incentivized when you have ranger class leveled up to at least mm. get in there with a creature uh and gain that value similar to luminar gasprint that you mentioned yeah. earlier the burning hands is going to take care of the three three what does arna hushenbeth draw off the top it's a despair sentinel unfortunately so no lethal this turn I love that this pet is Gavin's biggest fan here. Every oh, yeah. every action is just like, oh no, you killed my creature? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say the beholder is cute, but I'm not sure that's the right descriptor for it. That's a descriptor. Uh -huh, yep. We'll see if we're interested in casting this Shatter Skull Smashing at all, or just trying to get Ox. Yeah, I like it. Arnie Hushenbeth is just putting every, getting every single, you know, last drop out of value um, from his hand before he goes to Ox here. Now even recognizing instead of four damage, I would rather play an Ox here. Yeah. Which is really Super heads up. Now, if there wasn't a, uh, a Crow in War, this would pretty much wrap up the game here for Arnie Hushenbeth. But oh, what do we find? Edgewell Innkeeper, right, yeah. Bone Crusher Giants. Oh, okay. So as it stands, if Arne Hushenbeth made the other play of just attacking with Jaspera Sentinel, a Crow in War would be able to take one of the Jaspera Sentinels and then the stomp would be lethal. It still might be lethal the other way, but let's see here. So or, I think it doesn't look obviously lethal here. Well, let's see what Edgewell Innkeeper plus Bone Crusher Giants can concoct here. So one nice thing that you have here for a play from Arne Hushenbeth is you can attack with Jaspera Sentinel. And then if Ox gets in the way, you can let first strike damage resolve or actually you oh, stop wait, hang it on, first. No, wait. There's Den of the Bugbear. That's Oh, that's a Den of the Bugbear. Okay, I didn't even see that in the land. Yeah, four creatures plus the stomp. Okay. Sure, that's gotta be enough. 
Yep, that's it. I totally thought that was another pathway up there. Sneaky, sneaky, den of the bugbear. Yep. Looks All right, be. let's go. Yeah. Swing, everybody in. Ox of Agonis can do its best to block. Nothing in hand here to help Gavin Thompson stay alive, and that's going to be the concession. Arna can breathe a sigh of relief, gives the old fist pump, and we are going to get max value out of this best of three matches. Good wow. grief, boy. Impressive work there by Arnie Hushimbet to Ooh. give us all what we want here. And that is a final game to decide it all. All right, friends, we're going to take a very short break. Catch a breather. Go grab yourselves a beverage and get your butts back here super fast because we have a decider. See you in a minute. Welcome back to the Challenger Gauntlet, everybody. We have just seen an absolutely crazy game between oh, Arna and Gavin. And uh, we're, we're going to have one more of them. So brace yourselves, because this could get crazy, Corey. Yeah, it's already been crazy. No matter what, whoever wins this, you know, both players get to hold their head high knowing that they both play very good magic. Oh, oh yeah. Looks like a mulligan there from Gavin. And not a good hand. Oh, not a good uh, six there. And a nice one from Hushambeth. Oh, no. This is just disaster mode now for Gavin. Sending two cards back. Has to go with it, though. Not wow. like this, I say. I want to see a good game of magic between these two players. Come on, library, be good. Yeah, it looks like Gavin's really looking for the the one-two punch of Azika's Chariot into Ember Cleave it up and hope that's good enough on the play. And it, it's definitely possible. It's going to send back... Oh, I'm going to keep two Chariots and with the Burning Hands. <laughs> this is a yikes if I've ever seen one. Yeah, really tough either way. And, you know, double chariot is going to be great against some draws. Single chariot plus cleave is going to be great against some. So it's really kind of a statistic game of which of which combination wins the most. Yeah. Um, All right, well, let's get things underway. Kicking us off here. Good old Shadow Skull smashing and uh, Lair of the Hydra on the other side of things. There's line number four, so would be... En route to that chariot. But uh, Arna is going to start going a little crazy here with the uh, good old Magda. Luckily, though, he does have a second copy as well as now the Red Cap melee to deal with this Magda. Yeah, and I really liked Gavin's no play of the Shatter Skull Smashing as a land. Just mm -hmm. being able to Shatter Skull Smashing the Magda if we draw another fourth, a fourth land. But now it's a little trickier. Now, mm. that, that's a tough play to make when you for sure don't know you have a fourth land. It's going to play Shadow Skull, the Hammer Pass, not take three damage. Does have the Red Cap melee to deal with this Magda. So no treasures for you, no ramp. There is a second copy of Magda, but... Will it be as good as this Essica's Chariot that's coming down next turn for Gavin? Yeah, Arne Hushambeth not too upset to see Magda go away with a second one in hand mm -hmm. and really no other great play. But yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be is a Zika's Chariot any match for these double Acroan Wars. And it doesn't look awful here for Gavin, I must say, especially with a mulligan to five. 
Yeah, he's drawing pretty well. Has got Essica's chariot down. Granted, these cats may die. One of their nine lives is going to be <laughs> spent for sure. Yeah. With the uh, Shadow Skull smashing. But like you mentioned, those two are Crone Wars. They're just going to steal anything that Gavin plays. But luckily for him, he does have his own copy of a Crone War to, uh, to play a bit of a game of uh, creature ping pong here with Arne. So Magda, Brazen Outlaw. It's going to start making treasures, swinging in to this kitty cat. Crewing it up here. That would unlock the option if we block um, to be able to Shatter Skull Smashing it or just to Crow and War the Azika's Chariot. Yeah. So I think Arna is like in the uh, I'm going to steal your stuff mode. Yeah. And all these creatures, when they attack, you're so incentivized to block because they have all these abilities when they attack, either Azika's Chariot making cats or Magda's making treasure. So you're kind of put in a spot where you, you feel like you really need to block. But if we block with one of these cats, Shadow Skull Smashing takes care of the other cat, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden you got nothing to crew this chariot. So I think that's I a nice love block. This. Yeah. Yeah. That's so smart. Gavin is just like two steps ahead. He's like, yeah, you probably have an Akron War or Shadow Skull Smashing or something that kills my stuff. And I'm quite a fan of my stuff, so no. Yeah, they both have been playing like they know both hands, but yeah. they're just, you know, at the table. So really impressive work by both players. Yeah. Incredible high-level stuff here from both these players. This is the final deciding game to determine the final member in the top four. So now it's an interesting decision here. And it looks like a Crone Warrior is just going to steal a kitty cat. We do have the ability to... Uh tap it with Azika's mm -hmm. chariot here. And now this is going to be a huge draw step. If we can find something to crew this chariot and copy the other cat, it's going to be huge. If we don't, yeah. it's it's going to be a pretty embarrassing turn. Oh, Ooh. finds it. Ooh. Okay. Bonecrusher giant. That can jump in a Cadillac. And this is going to be bad news bears for Arna as soon as he sees this hit the board. Yeah, okay, look at what Gavin's doing here, leaving open a green mana instead of a red <laughs> mana. Normally you think there's no point in doing that. You'd rather bluff a red cap melee, but Gavin's list does have one snakeskin veil and yep. setting stops everywhere just to make Arnie <laughs> think, maybe you have it. Yeah, that card is, is scary indeed because basically whatever removal spell Arnie would deploy, whether it be Shadow Skull Smashing or a Crone War, has the uh, possibility of whiffing with that snakeskin bill. A single copy in Gavin's deck. Love it. Yeah, not an amazing draw from Arne or anything. You know, we we had we kept seven cards. That's what we got going for us for sure. But uh nothing in nothing, you know, over the top extraordinary from Arne. Yeah. At this point, do you think it's just all right, if you have it, you have it. But I gotta go for it, right? Yeah, it's interesting here because we can attack with Magda to get a six mana total and then we can do a nice defensive play and take out both cats. That minimizes the amount of damage you're taking next turn. Um, you can also just a crow and war to take an untapped cat and, and have a blocker. Yeah, I think I like this play as well. Just clear out the cats. And what's cool about this too is that even if there was a snakeskin veil, the other two damage would still go through. Yeah. And now that's a pretty clear sign that there is not one available. So the bluff didn't work, but uh, Gavin didn't really know that Arne's hand was all things that target creatures. So Arne has to go for it. <laughs> There's no choice. Another Bone Crusher. Nice. Okay. Now this is the turn where we have to attack because of chapter two. Yeah. Which makes crewing the Azika's chariot with this bone crusher a bit more awkward. I, I kind of like the cheeky play of stealing the cat, crewing. <laughs> well, I suppose you wouldn't want to crew the giant, but you could steal it back and make some. Well, I mean, you already have to. You're already going to lose the bone crusher giant. It looks like to this Akron war. So stealing yeah. the cat, crewing the chariot. With Bone Crusher attacking for four, copying a cat, so you have one untapped creature is is reasonable. 
It's not the worst idea, but yeah. uh, looks like the cat and the giant are going to have a bit of a an altercation. <laughs> Little cat and mouse game. Cat and giant game. <laughs> And here comes another giant. I'm I'm getting a little bit worried about this Magda though. She's she's gone unchecked for quite some time now. Agreed, agreed. It is looking uh, like it definitely could turn into something here. I assume we're more than likely going to see another Acroan War here to take away that Bone Crusher giant. Might yeah, be sure just might. a <laughs> keep passing it around type of game. Yeah. Not hot potato, hot Bone Crusher giant. The one big advantage that Gavin has in this game of Hot Potato is the fact that Gavin can tap it at will uh, yeah. with the Chariot and might not even choose to tap it um, if if we play a Crone War just with the thought of, I'm going to Crone War it back and I want it untapped. Yeah. Would he is risk that, burning... that, though? Because if he does that, then Burning Hands just takes care of the, uh, the Chariot. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's another reason to just not crew right now. Well, let's see what he does. The Crown War is going to land. Bone Crusher Giant, the only target. Oh, and he goes for it. He has a perfect opportunity now for RNA to deal with this chariot. Does he yeah, buy the second bluff? Really tempting. <laughs> really tempting because it also allows you to get in for two and kind of replace that treasure. I, I, <laughs> I can't imagine not killing it. Yep. Don't hold back. Make him have it. Burning Hands is going to hit. There goes the Chariot, leaving Gavin with nothing on his side of the battlefield. Magda going to get in there for another two points of damage and another treasure made. Oh, oh that's the not worst. a great draw here. Looking great for Arnie Hushenbeth here. No bueno, I say. Hmm. So Arnie, I mean... Yeah, things are looking pretty darn good here. It does also have the Lair of the Hydra, so can start smacking with that. Yeah, and here's the thing. Using a Crowan War on this turn is extra awkward because no matter what creature you take, it's going to be forced to attack in the next turn with this Crowan War, and then it's going to die to Chapter 3 first, mm. and the Lair gets to attack you. So, like, there's really no great play from Gavin uh, at this stage of the game. Yeah, the only thing you can do is a Crow and War, steal something, and cross your fingers. Hope you don't die. Yeah, either way, such great play from both of these players during this match. This has been incredible to watch. Yeah, just an absolute masterclass. If you ever want to know how to play these Gruul decks, I highly, I highly recommend you watch this entire series between these two players. Just watch all the standard portion of this tournament. It's just been incredible. The historic has been great as well, but the standard has really stood out to me as some some masterful play. Rule has been so impressive lately, and even more so in the hands of these two players. Burning Hands and Shadow Skull smashing available for Arne, who is able to get four points of damage in here, plus whatever the Hydra decides to do if he wants to go that route. So could attack in for nine, for ten technically this turn, if Arne wanted to get max aggressive here. And there's nothing you really have to fear on the other side as far as lethal. Um, we're, we're quite a ways away from that from Gavin, so this seems like the turn where Arne kind of, it would seem like we're just going to go pedal to the metal. Yep. I mean, he's tapped out. YOLO. Big thanks being deployed here by Arna Hushin Bats. Is going to go for the Lair of the Hydra for four. Swinging in here for eight points of damage. Okay. Now, will we see the Shadow Skull smashing untapped? Nope. Turn just passes back. There's another land. Preserving the treasure. Now we can Ember Cleave that Magda. But as it stands, I don't see a way out of this for Gavin. You're forced to attack. Mm hmm. Magda's doing her best, makes a treasure. We're going to see Ember Cleave. Taking down Arna to eight. This is uh, going to be all she wrote here as Arna has 
So... I think he's got enough here for the Hydra. Okay. Don't crush a giant goes back. Can you do it? Oh, what did Gavin see? Hmm. Oh, he's unhappy about something. I mean, was there anything he could have done differently? Yeah, I'm trying to imagine that as well, and I, I didn't see anything that was really egregious on Gavin's side here. Yeah, I'm curious about that, because that, that's the best he could have done. That's the most damage he could have got through. He got the Bone Crusher back, loses the Magda. Well, should I say Arnie loses the Magda? Yeah, and I think at this point, you just make a 6-6 six, six layer and force the chump lock and then just t try to top deck a land and do it again. Perhaps a defensive Embercleave? Um, yeah, I guess it, oh, yeah, I guess. Okay, yeah, if you attack with Magda, just say go. Mm -hmm. And then you get Bone Crusher Giant Brack. You can just flash in Embercleave for six mana, put mm -hmm. it on Bone Crusher Giant, and then you would trade with that layer. It it still it still would be a trade, and then there's another layer. So it's not yeah. like that would have really helped that much. Yeah, I don't so, think that would have changed too much there. Yeah. So don't beat yourself up too badly there, Gavin. Excellently played. Arne is breathing a sigh of relief. I think he may have had a mild panic attack there in the end.